Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to another video. Today I have with me here the Beakski 120mm AIO cooler. So I think it's called the BYINR120-WCOL. That's what it's called. So I'm just going to be going over what are the inclusions with the box, uh, what are the features of the cooler, and we're going to see if how far can I overclock my Ryzen 5 2600 with a cooler like this. So let's get into it. Alright, so the main reason on why I got this cooler is because I want to find out how cheap can your budget be to be able to get an AIO cooler to be able to get into the world of overclocking. And so I tried overclocking before, well, I didn't really had like decent amount of knowledge when it comes to overclocking back then. I do believe I still have a lot to learn right now. And also the stock cooler didn't really do a good job, but I actually forgot the numbers, but we're gonna check that out again today. I also wanna thank my mom because I didn't actually buy this. She got this for me back in Christmas. So thanks mom for unintentionally sponsoring this video. Now that's out of the way, let's see what's inside the box. Alright, so now we have the manual which teaches you how to install the cooler depending on what socket you're using. For Intel, the compatible sockets are LGA1366, 1156, 1155, 1151, 1150, and 775. It also includes a mount for the LGA2011 which the manual also shows you how to install. For Team Red, it's only compatible with the AM3, AM3+, Plus, and AM4 socket. Next, we have the included 120mm fan. The cable is long enough to be able to reach this side of the motherboard. This isn't addressable by the way, but it has its own switch to be able to change the colors. Now, the cable of this could be bothersome for you, but the way I have it set up, I can barely notice it that it's there. Next, we have the mounts, the screws, and one syringe of thermal paste. The cooler itself doesn't feel cheap at all, but then again, this is the first time that I've gotten my hands on an AIO cooler, so you could take this with a little bit of grain of salt. After all, what we really want to know is how well will it cool my CPU, which we'll find out later on. What I really don't like about it though is I can't change the color to, a, well, anything other than blue, so I'm pretty much stuck with this color and it really ruins the theme of my computer which is black and red. Finally, it has this extra cable, just in case you want to connect more fans. Now let's go ahead and see the cooling capabilities of this cooler. Alright guys, so it's installed and I've run Cinebench to test the overclock if it's stabled. So I was able to overclock up to 3.9 GHz with a voltage of, I think, 1.3? 1.33 something? Somewhere along those lines, but... Yeah, during the test, this is the max temperature that we've reached. So 74 degrees, not too bad. Uh, it didn't reach farther than that. I think that's a really good like temperature to sit on. But I'm also gonna run some tests with the stock cooler. And well, to be honest, I should have just tested with the stock cooler first before I installed this cooler. But well, you live and you learn. Let's see if the stock cooler will provide similar to okay-ish results compared to the Beakski 120mm AIO cooler. Okay, so I've put the stock cooler back on. Not sure if you guys can see it. It's, I think it's too blurry. Not really sure why changing the cooler is always a hassle for me, but I'm exhausted. But yeah, let's see how this goes. I haven't changed the settings yet, so it's still overclocked to the boost clock on all cores and the voltage also the same and yeah, let's see how it goes. Alright, so we're in the BIOS. We got the core clock at 3.9 like I said, and then let's double check the voltage. So it's at 1, not sure if you guys can see it, there you go. It's 1.3375. Let's check what the temperatures will be. So with the Beakski 120mm AIO cooler, the max temperature that we reached was... I think it was 74 degrees or 76. Also, I've kept the 120mm fan of the Beakski because I don't have any extra fans lying around. 
Let's put up our hardware monitor and Cinebench R23. Let's put you there on the other side. All right, let's see how this goes. I just opened Cinebench and hardware monitor at this point. So it's running at 55 degrees. So let's run Cinebench and see what happens. All right, let's check the temperature. Oh, things are getting toasty. 79, don't go 80. Oh, it reached 80, 81. It's going higher, higher. It's getting more power. No, 83, 84, 85. Oh my God. And it died. So I think we can come up with a conclusion right there. Although I do want to check how really how far I can go with the stock cooler. So I'm just going to go ahead and reset this. So running with the stock cooler, we can't get an overclock of a stable 3.9 gigahertz on all cores with the stock cooler, but the big ski 120 millimeter AIO was able to do that just fine. However, I'm not able to reach four gigahertz with that. So I'm not really sure what the issue is on why I'm not able to reach four gigahertz with the big ski AIO cooler, but 3.9, Running at 1.3375, no problem for the big ski. I was also exporting a couple of files the other day, running on stock cooler, and when I was exporting this uh, one hour video, and I was r just running on stock, it took one and a half hour, or maybe two and a half. But when I overclocked it to 3.9, it only took me like an hour to export it. So I guess the performance increase being able to have a stable clock speed of 3.9 on the Ryzen 5 2600 is a huge difference especially if you're a video editor or anyone that relies on CPU power but yeah let's check if I can see what really the max settings that we can go with with the stock cooler so I'm not gonna let you guys see this it's gonna be boring I'm just gonna go ahead and run a couple of uh, stress test and see what works all right guys so we're finally done stress testing the stock cooler and the farthest that i was able to reach was 3.65 gigahertz with a voltage of 1.175 volts anything farther than that i get crashes but on some forums that i was able to search some people were getting or rather some people were able to get a, an overclock of 4 gigahertz which is crazy i think and I guess ambient temperature plays a huge role on that. Here in the Philippines, it's actually a bit warm than most countries, but I think the people that I was able to see that was able to overclock up to four gigahertz, I think they are from countries that have colder temperatures, but I don't really know. At this point, we got a maximum temperature of 85 degrees, which is, I think if you're gonna sit on that temperature, every day is not a good idea and so really it was clear that the big ski 120 millimeter AIO cooler was going to outperform the stock cooler well first of all being an AIO cooler but it was only a matter of how much will it outperform it and at this point it outperformed it by being able to overclock up to 3.9 gigahertz and having a stable temperature of 74 to 78 degrees and yeah, I'm still gonna try to overclock it up to 4 gigahertz, see if I can do that because, well, if some people could overclock it up to 4 gigahertz with the stock cooler, regardless of the ambient temperature, then for sure I can overclock it up to 4 gigahertz with the AIO cooler, even though it's not really a good AIO cooler, if you may. But yeah, let's wrap this up with a conclusion. Alright, so now let's talk if it's worth it. I didn't test any games with it because I really just wanted to find out if the cooler can hold up the temperatures when the CPU is on like being put at its max capacity and I think Cinebench already does a good job with that. Now let's get to what are the findings. So with the stock cooler, the maximum overclock that we can reach is up to 3.65 and the max temperatures were around I think 85 was 85 so that's pretty bad for a cooler and you can't pretty much have those numbers all the time every day and for the big ski 120 millimeter cooler 
the max boost clock that we reached was well 3.9 gigahertz with a maximum temperature of 74 78 and i think that's on the fine-ish side of things because i think 80 degrees and 85 above if those are the red flags for temperatures and also recently i had a project that was urgent the video was needed to be exported right away it was a one hour video i can't really remember what the resolution of the video was but it would have taken me originally two hours to export the one hour video but overclocking up to well this is from the stock setting so since i was able to overclock it up to 3.9 gigahertz it have that number so from two hours it dropped to 55 minutes and this is using Descript by the way it's a video editing software that allows you to transcribe your video so you can watch and read at the same time I use it for work I'm not gonna get into that and so being able to overclock up to 3.9 gigahertz with the big ski cooler was it worth it for my work yes it is and I think being able to cut down my export times to in half is a really good like return on investment if let's say the company was able to uh, sponsor this cooler to me or provide it to me because they found out that being able to overclock with up to 3.9 gigahertz will be able to save a little bit of more time and for our line of work time is money but yeah for the gaming side of things i didn't really look into that but i think that's supposed to be on a overclocking video and this is uh, well really not a overclocking video guide it's really just well how can we push the cpu up to like certain temperatures where the cooler can handle it and so yeah for me getting this cooler is pretty much worth it but if you guys have any idea on any other coolers that are out there at the same price point and does a better job or even like similar to it and has like more features like the light on the cooler it can actually be changed so again that's the negative part for me the negative part about this cooler and also well i don't know if it's a negative but the um 120 millimeter fan that was included it can't be like change from your computer but it has an external switch for that for me that's fine not really a deal breaker but then again i haven't really had any other experience with an aio cooler and so maybe I'll be able to compare it to other AIO uh, coolers in the future but yeah let me know down below in the comments if you guys have any other cooler in mind at the same price point that is far more better or if not at least um, even the slightly better than this cooler so yeah that's it for this video guys um, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one